This is it. Three, two, one. This may very well be the wokest Asian clip that mainstream television has ever made. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. We've got a little different setup today. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. But first, we are going to be talking about this Grey's Anatomy scene that is bringing some Asian Americans to tears. Let's run the clip. When I was a kid, I used to stare at my face in the mirror and wonder if I could use my mom's makeup to make me look more American, which of course I understood to mean more white. You want to be like all the other kids? And my teachers and people I saw in movies and on TV. I wanted to feel normal like I belonged. Do you even think we'll ever stop being seen as foreign? We are Americans. Your face is American. for help no one intervened or even took a video it's so awful oh i'm just kidding guys Stop it was it. emotional it was very well made listen guys yahoo posted this clip so i know it's going viral of course reddit had this classical range of responses some people loved it some people hated it some people were in the middle but so guess picky. what we're gonna break it down from the micro perspective to the mid to the macro. So make sure you like this video if you like what we're about to do. Yeah! All right, everybody, uh, let's start off with the micro, David. Really, what is this scene about? I mean, I know people just saw it, but a uh, quick breakdown. This scene is trying to encapsulate a dramatized version of what might happen in real life if a bunch of Asian doctors had to solve an old Asian lady that was attacked in an Asian hate crime. So basically, they save her life, they stabilize her, but she's still really beat up, and basically the sadness is coming, right? Some doctors are like, ah, why'd they do this? She didn't even do anything, and the other doctor's like, will they ever accept us in this country? They're blaming us for COVID. And then this old Japanese lady comes in and says, yeah, don't ever question it. You are American, look at your face. And somebody in the observation room was another doctor's just like, nobody even called the police. Nobody tried to stop. Nobody cares about us. Oh, I can't believe it. And then a white doctor who's, you know, like your white liberal progressive doctor's like, oh my gosh, this is terrible but I don't know what to do. I mean, I thought the scene overall did a pretty good job of encapsulating a lot of people's initial emotions of like a year and a half ago when this stuff started to happen. Now, maybe that's when they wrote the scene and then they performed it and then it finally came out. But overall, like these are emotions that I feel like a lot of people have been through a while ago. Now, uh, my question is like, you know, for some Asians, they really don't get the message unless it's wrapped up in a high budget TV show or movie because some people people needed to be dramatized with the good lighting and the good editing for them to really get hit by it because they don't really like having the street conversations right. or watching the YouTube videos about this type or, of stuff. Or you might not live in a ultra dense urban environment. I mean, obviously we live in New York City where a lot of this stuff is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, also, I think for the 35 and up generation, you know, they're not tapped into social media. A lot of these discussions that we have, Andrew, that are very difficult, harsh realities, uncomfortable truths, they take place on social media, but they don't take place with like a Grey's Anatomy budget with the nice refinement and the polish. Some people need those things. You know, some people needed everything everything everywhere all at once they reconsider their relationship with their mom you know but that's just how human nature is some people they just get activated by you know the nice cameras and the nice lighting it's all fair. right let's go on to the mid real quick because i got some questions for asian americans out there you let me know in the comments down below what you think i think one of the main questions uh that was brought up from alex landy's doctor character when he goes do you think they'll ever stop seeing us as foreigners and i'm like man you know it's such like a fragile thing to put your Americanness in the hands of people who never want to give it to you. Like there's a lot of nice people out there who will grant you your Americanness. The law will grant you your Americanness. You're a citizen, whatever. But there's always ignorant people out there who will not believe you are based on your face or the fact that you say you're proud of being Asian or whatever. So I'm just like, you know what? At some point, either you don't care about what those people say or you don't care about being considered American as a whole. Yeah, I mean, if some people are crazy enough to attack another person that they 
they think has been here for 400 or 500 years. What do you think they're going to do to somebody who they think has been here for like 20 years and doesn't even belong here? To be honest, to, to answer Alex Landy's character, I know those aren't his words. They just what the writer wrote for this character. But I'm just saying that it's like... Um, to be honest, I think more Asians need to study more American history as well as Asian history. And we'd understand how Asian or American we are. You know, America has always had this question of like, who's American, right? Anglo-Protestant people come. They essentially like wipe out all the Native Americans. Are the Native Americans American? They were here first, right? But then Irish people come that are Catholic, Italians come that are Catholic. And at one point, Andrew, Irish and Italians are not considered white. Then Latinos and Asians come even more different looking people. They enter white status. We're not American, right? Because we're like the new groups that arrive in, in mass in 1960, 1970. So this type of question that Alex Landy is asking is very tenuous because it's like, you're putting your validation on an outside group that has probably some self-incentive uh and you know the reactions are mixed to not accept you so obviously as an asian american andrew you're saying you don't like that question because it's like hey uh will you give me something you don't want to give me and then well can i hinge my feelings well, on how you're feeling about me no i mean at some point as an american you've done the work and you are an American and just nobody can take that away from you because it's also built into your passport, whether or not other people identify, whether or not you're wearing the American flag on your forehead, like you got to just believe that you're American or like I said, stop giving a F if people think you're American or not and just being like, I don't even know what that means. And I'll tell you this, I've been to Texas where people uh, are like Billy Bob and stuff like that. The educated people, they actually tend to be still um, less nativist. Like they tend to be like, well, if you're about by American philosophy, not all of them, but like more than you think. It has to do with education necessarily, yeah. not necessarily just geography of how people feel about you because uh, the education and the tribalism levels and the visual presentation all kind of go together. I will say this, Andrew, the last thing, my last point about the mid, there's nothing more American than degaffing whether or not people see you as American. Yeah, Think about you're it. Right. The most rebellious no. art forms come from America. Rock, rap, hyper-American art forms, super rebellious. Hey, as long as you're a capitalist and you don't give a F about what other people, then you're American. You just go get yours. That's very American, you know? Um, all right, David, moving on to the macro. Uh, let's zoom out. What's the analogy that you can wrap this all up? All right, in? so I'll say this, and I got a shout out to the Grey's Anatomy's writers because it sparked a very interesting analogy in my mind. Imagine we're all in college, Andrew. There's this huge frat party that we're all trying to get into. Oh, there's parties. a side yard. There's a main room. You know, people are hot boxing in the garage, doing keg stands in another room, whatever, right? There's a bunch of Asians trying to get into the frat party. The frat party, by the way, is America. Uh, so some of us, we're trying to get to the door, right? But then they're looking at all these Asians, right? And they're like, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys are cool, especially the pretty girls. And then maybe some of the super cool dudes, you guys are cool, but everybody else is not cool. So... You know, there's some people disagreement in the white frat whether or not to even let us in. But while we're like knocking on the front door, Andrew, people are throwing juice and beer bottles down from the second floor. These are the bad actors, right? Wow. So some of us are getting hit with beer bottles. Some of us are getting splashed with like Hawaiian punch, right? Some people are on the back of the line not experiencing any of this. And some people hit the right attributes, whether they're a super pretty girl or a cool dude or whatever. And they go into the side yard into the cornhole spritzer zone you know where people are sipping mimosas and playing darts but it's not the main room where you know like kid Leroy and 24k are playing in the main like rap room or whatever it's it's a side yard room but they're in there and it's comfortable and nobody attacks you and people treat you nice and it's part of the main infrastructure but it's a second tier room so you're saying it's the set it's almost like a, a purgatory perhaps or some type of middle stage I would more compare it to the base pod at EDM versus kinetic the main stage you know right you're like you you really made it when you're playing kinetic right when you're Joe Rogan, Andrew Schultz, hyper American mainstream cultures. They're not in the main room where like, you know, other college students are hooking up with all the hot athletes and vice versa. But this is the cornhole side where it's and like, there's still some nice there's, people. Yeah, there's still like, some, it's but, yappyism, but, it's yuppieism. Yeah. I mean, it's essentially where the doctors are in Grey's Anatomy, okay. right? So like I said, there's this huge variance in experience amongst the Asian Americans. Some of the Asian Americans that are way in the back of the line, they figure they'll never get in. They're starting a party at a Rambler across the street. Alpha Zeta New, AZN is a new frat. It's right next to the Latino frat and the African American frat in Rambler houses across from this nice frat. Um, some people are like 
mad that they see it happen. Some people are still like, I'm getting in there. And other people are, like we said, are in the cornhole side. Like some people in the cornhole side are just like, ah, thank God I got in here. F everybody else. And other people are just oblivious. Like, yeah, why isn't everybody here? I thought that that was the natural, like everybody could get in that got in, but actually they were hyper selective to get in. So right. now occasionally they'll run into somebody who gets beat up whether they got hit with a beer bottle or whatever reason they got beat up and they stumbled their way into the cornhole side and now they like have cognitive dissonance and they're surprised and they have to have a reaction to it. So the people on the cornhole, they meet these people who are coming from the outside being like, what? You couldn't get in the party this whole time? And then what? They threw beer bottles on you? Oh my gosh, I'm here playing cornhole with the spritzer and the uh, light beers. And I'm and like, the nice I white thought it people. was all good. I, we're having seltzer. This is where the trulies are and the, and the white claws. Right, yeah. I'm out here partying with like uh, the whole cast of like Big Bang Theory and Silicon Valley and all that. Nice so, whites. So wh wh where would we be? Where would the Fung Bros be? Are we like selling vape pens to the outside or the or, or no, we're in between the streets of the two parties being like, hey, if you guys want to leave the cornhole side, come to the Alpha Zeta new party over here. Yeah, we would either be like some sort of comedian DJ that's like trying to offer our services to the black frat, the Latino frat, the AZN frat, and the white frat, or probably selling like vape cartridges. But that's what gives us our perspective, Andrew, because we've probably like not been only native organically to one of the groups, you know, because there's so many different players in this equation, the scene that I painted, but we've been like visitors to everywhere. Oh, you know what it is? We might be trying to float around to the different cornhole sections of the other parties too. Oh, okay, because yeah. they got yards too. Yeah, I don't know if they're playing cornhole, they might be playing basketball. Yeah, 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 maybe maybe they're playing basketball in the front or, or we hop in a game and then we hop out. But we're we're not really in the main room of maybe any of the parties, so anyway, except for the to, Asian one. So obviously to draw this back to the Grey's Anatomy analogy, everybody who's a doctor and has achieved some level of assimilation, like partial assimilation, they're in the cornhole. They're not in the Joe Rogan section. Joe Rogan doesn't care about Asians. He doesn't like Asian things, but they're over here and they're like seeing it. And they're seeing this old lady who was obviously probably a poor elderly person that nobody identified with. And she's the victim of this vicious attack. And they have to get, start to consider how much do I identify with this lady? We're of the same, you know, race or ethnicity or uh, country background. And that's actually the situation, Andrew, that a lot of yappy yuppies that have assimilated to a certain extent in America are going through right now. So Grey's Anatomy, kudos to you. Made me think of this analogy. Shout out to Grey's Anatomy. Now, what do you think should happen? Well, I'm going to leave it up to people who are watching. You know, I want to hear your thoughts because you heard our thoughts for a while. Um... You know, Obviously, my plan like, would be that the people probably in the cornhole understand the structure of what's going on and help somehow, but it's difficult to understand how to help because they don't even run the section. And honestly, the whole idea of people from the cornhole leaving that and then starting their own auxiliary party on the side of the side yeah, thing, they should take it what seems they unlikely, though. It's just not likely to happen. And they should take what they learned from the advanced white frats cornhole to start cornhole at Alpha Zeta New. No, and I, and I think that's starting to happen on some level. We know some of the organizations sort of that are doing that. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it just seems like Asians trying to be like fancy white people. Well, well they care about, I'll tell you, this a lot of asians seemingly and this is not all asians they care a lot about the comfortable metric more than maybe like the pride metric hey you guys let us know in the comments down below there's a lot of food for thought right there every front thing from david's analogy to the questions we posed in the mid you know because we always like to take things from the micro to the mid to the macro those are three different ways and uh to view things so you let us know in the comments down below we are the hot pop boys and until next time we out peace, peace.